Hey all, it's time again to explain one of the basic features of EWM in what we promise to be an easy and understandable way. Enjoy this video of our series, Understand SAP EWM. Hi all, it is time again to understand one of the basic concepts and features of SAP EWM. So we are in the series, Understand SAP EWM, that means we explain the basics. So for the more experienced among you, it might be not that helpful, but even more for the less experienced ones. And I also think that everybody who is a bit more experienced can learn in, in the sense that you learn concepts for how to explain it to somebody else. Uh, for example, your business team, of course, they do not have that deep insights into uh, EWM. So um, I think it's helpful also for you. Uh, feel free to use uh, this video to explain it to your colleagues. Yeah, what we do today is the um, warehouse order creation rules. Uh, one of the core features of SAP EWM, something that you need in every warehouse. And the video is separated into an introduction part where we look at the, the preparation for warehouse orders, for warehouse order creation rules. Uh, the, the middle part of the video is the core features of the warehouse order creation rules and the closure with the creation of the warehouse orders. And finally, I will give you a, a good overview and a summary at the very end. Let us start with the introduction and as you know, as uh, all of my videos of the series Understand EWM, we look at uh, an easy comparison from real life. And this time I took a, a funnel at the filling, uh, filling system. Uh, so you see that um, here something is, uh, put into the funnel and here at this end something is coming out of the funnel. And if we take our context, we have warehouse task, this yellow bubbles here flowing into the funnel and on the other side of the funnel you have warehouse orders. So that's basically packages of warehouse tasks. And this conversion or this creation of warehouse orders that's happening for example during wave release but it also happens if you create warehouse task in a different context like for example simply against one ODO for instance. Yeah our funnel so in, in between this filling system we have our, our funnel and that's the warehouse order creation rule. Yeah that's a very simple comparison but I think it explains the basic concept pretty good. So for now, just imagine we have one warehouse order creation rule and we have an input and we have an output. As part of the preparation, it is important to understand that we have such system for every combination of activity area and queue. Now that means it is never possible to have Warehouse task from different activity areas and different queues in the same warehouse order. Now imagine that you have one filling line for activity area A and QX and another one for the same activity area but different queue and also another one for a different activity area but same queue. Uh, though that means we never have the same warehouse orders mixing up a warehouse task from uh, having different characteristics over here. And uh, the activity area in this context is either the source or the destination activity area and that is being determined based on the warehouse process type that we use for the warehouse task creation and here you have one parameter and this is basically saying whether we use the source or the destination. And the queue thinks it's obvious uh, every warehouse task has a queue and that's another separation criteria here. So let us get back to our 
initial filling machine. Yeah, we know now um, when this is happening and we know that we have the separation between activity area and Q. And now we look uh, at, the, at the core part. Yeah, so what we did so far, uh, I will summarize again. This has been the preparation, so the steps before and at the beginning of the warehouse order creation. Uh, what we saw up to now, the task creation, the grouping by activity area and queue, and then we picked one warehouse order creation rule. That was our funnel. Yeah? For now, let us just assume there is only one. Yeah? Um, this is uh, at the beginning of our funnel. Uh, you see this is a part of our picture, so we are here at step one. Now, the last thing that we do here um, at the beginning, at least logically, is the the sorting. Uh, so we sort all the warehouse tasks um, before we try to create warehouse orders, and this sorting has a direct impact on the decision which warehouse task will later be in one warehouse order. Uh, technically, I put a note here, technically this is happening after the item filters. We will come through the item filters in the next step, but logically it's easier to understand if we say now, okay, we saw it at the beginning of the warehouse order creation. Now we sort the task. Uh, you will later understand the impact of this sorting. Uh, uh, so here we have our task and we bring them in a sequence, for example, based on the on the weight or based on the picking sequence or based on the quantity, whatever. Uh, based on your context, one or the other might be useful. And um, now we already come to the core of the warehouse order creation. And that was this uh, bullet number two. So we are in the middle of our funnel. And the first thing we do is we apply item filters. Uh, that means specific items here in this context warehouse task are being filtered out if they do not meet specific criteria. For example, uh, minimum maximum weight, uh, or for example, a specific warehouse process type. Uh, I only want to create warehouse orders with a specific warehouse process type, with a specific route, etc. Yeah, you can check the different options in customizing. And what we do here um, basically is deciding should the warehouse task be further processed uh, or should it be sorted out and not considered for the warehouse order that we are creating right now. Uh, pretty easy. Uh, next thing is a little bit more complex. It's called subtotal filter. And it's the same thing with the difference that we take a group of tasks. And the group of tasks is defined by the consolidation group. Uh, this is a group from the, um, the delivery item. So we take all tasks for a given group and then apply the filter criteria. Uh, so for example, take the total weight of all those tasks for a given group and then check against the minimum or maximum. And if, for example, the maximum weight is exceeded, we take the whole group and sort it out. Uh, like this. This is all tasks for one consolidation group. Uh, sort it out if we do not meet one of the filter criteria. Yeah? And all the groups which are okay, they pa are passed to the next step. Yeah. Next thing is the limit. And limit is straightforward to understand. Yeah, we have, uh, now I talked about minimum maximum weight um, on the warehouse task level before and um, as a filter. Now we are talking about a limit on the level of the warehouse order. So the warehouse order as such is, in this uh, screenshot here, for example, is not allowed to have more than 25 kilogram. Uh, and then we add one task after the other. And then the first task, for example, is five kilograms, the next one 10, the next one five, then we have a total of 20. And then the next task is coming with a weight of six, uh, which would be a total of 26 and um, this is not allowed. Yeah? We reach the limit, we ex exceeded the limit and then this task is um, being sorted out. And here you see that 
the inbound sorting has a direct impact on uh, which task uh, later um, being put together into one worse order. Uh, because here we just add them up based on the inbound sequence and then check with each task whether we have reached one of our limits. Uh, here also other limits like the minimum maximum uh, whereas task for uh, each HU. Uh, we come to the HU creation in the next step. Yeah. I think that's also pretty easy to understand. Yeah. Proceed, sort out. Packing profiler already mentioned. And <coughs> what we can do here is to create pick HUs. Yeah. So we are planning basically which worst task will later be picked into one HU. And there is a pretty simple algorithm where we just take a condition record and provide the packaging material and um, EWM will just assign the task to the packaging material up until one of the uh, capacity constraints of the packaging material is reached, like the maximum volume or weight. Uh, we can we can also select complex uh, packaging modes or implement bodies here for uh, sophisticated kinds of case calculation. And here it's also possible to sort again. So we did this inbound sorting at the very beginning and there might be a um, need for an additional sorting here, which is different from the inbound sorting. Uh, if you build your HUs uh, based on specific dimension or volume of the products, it might be reasonable to sort in a different way here. Uh, for example, if for the inbound sorting, the weight is not a factor at all, but for the pack, packing profile, you want for any reason, you want all the heavy product in one pick HU and the light product in another one. Uh, so. Then during in mode you might want to sort by the pick pairs and here for the packing profile you sort by the weight uh, to avoid that the heavy products are crashing the light ones for example. Yeah, so in this step what you should take away from here is that we have the option to create HUs already during warehouse order creation and also assign the task to the HUs. Yeah, and if you would then confirm such a or look at such a warehouse order later in your system you see here in this tab uh, this is the UI for the warehouse order. You see that there is a uh, HU already planned and the HU itself is not created technically. You see the HU field is here empty. This is also an, an option in the packing profile, but we have planned an HU with a given packaging material already. Good. That's it with the core part. So we come to the closure of the warehouse order and the warehouse order creation and here we basically have uh, one step from my perspective and also this this preparation core closure that's not an official um, wording uh, that is just uh, what I thought would be a reasonable separation and easy for you to understand and from my perspective the only thing that we do in the closure is again a final sorting so we can at this point sort the tasks which are already assigned to one warehouse order. And that's the important difference to the sorting that we had before, where we are basically doing the sorting ahead of the assignment to one warehouse order. And now we already have our warehouse orders and we sort the task within these warehouse orders. And that means here we have a direct impact on how the picker will travel later. Uh, so this is most reasonable uh, to uh, be used for the travel pass, yeah, for the optimal sequence that the operator should uh, walk through the warehouse. Yeah, so here to make it visible we have our blue bubbles with the task and we define a sequence in which they are being processed. Yeah, finally, and uh, most of you probably had this question in mind all the time already, and uh, you were wondering why I did not explain this at the very beginning. I thought it is easier to understand at the end. And, and the open question is, yeah, what happens with the task that we 
uh, could not process so far. Yeah, you um, remember that for most of the uh, features in the core part of the Warehouse Order Creation, you we always had these blue arrows here, yeah, where the tasks have been sorted, filtered out, where reach, reach the limit, and they they just dropped here somewhere. Yeah, and the answer to this question, yeah, what happens with this task, is the fact that we, uh, let me see it again, the starting out, is the fact that we do not have only one filling line and one funnel, but in in, in fact we have uh, uh, another funnel right after the first one. Yeah. So if we sort out for the first one, we have another funnel waiting right away and trying to process the task. And this funnel will have different a different rule set in the core, yeah, different limits and different um, filters and so on. Now it can be completely different. And at the end, you can have hundreds of different uh, funnels uh, sequenced one after the other, and the rules can be different. And at, at the very end, all those tasks which have been sorted out here, uh, they should uh, be uh, assigned to the next one or the next one. And at some point, they end up in one warehouse order uh, coming out here uh, late. Even with, if none of your warehouse order creation rules working out and they are all filtering and sorting out, uh, at the very, very end, uh, you don't see that one in customizing, at the very end there's one default rule uh, which is applied by EWM standard. Yeah, That's when you create a warehouse order and you see this rule as DEF, that's the default rule um, that the standard applies at the very end if nothing uh, else matches and I think that's just a one warehouse order one task assignment rule very simple one just to make sure that you get at least any kind of warehouse order yeah, so this is basically what you find here in customizing where you define a search sequence sequence for creation rules and again based on the activity area and I explained you at the very beginning this is either the source or the destination this is set and the warehouse process type and you see here the sequence number is important uh, so here on number one this might be our first funnel if we miss to create a warehouse order here we go to number two so that's the next rule here that's the second funnel and so on yeah you can create hundreds of rules yeah so here for for the first one you you might uh, want to create rules for a specific route and for this route uh, you have uh, let's say a, a, a carrier like a parcel service uh, for UPS for instance and for this route you're using small HU types yeah you you create only for small cartons yeah so the first first other creation rule as a packing proof as a as a filter with your route uh, for the parts of carrier and as a packing profile for small cartons uh, and then you filter for example based on the volume or the weight uh, because the carrier does not allow uh, to carry high heavy weight or high volume and then for those items uh, you apply another um, uh, for the for the heavy and high volume items for a different route you apply another rule at the very end where you do not use a, a small carton as a packing material for the packing profile but rather a, a full pallet or half pallet for instance and that's just one example now yeah so we are already done we had the summary and what i would like to give you is an overview about all steps again and you see on the left side one up to four is the preparation uh, task creation um, grouping by activity area and queue and then the selection of one warehouse order creation rule and then we have what i called before the core part uh, this is uh, five up to nine so filters uh, item on consolidation group level, then the limits uh, here, and um, the 
uh, tube creation or the packing profile rules and then our closure number 10 sorting again uh, and last but not least you also get the assignment to the respective customizing items um, so if you want to check later again for the details in your system uh, you you should find um, a lot of information here in the integrated help for the specific items and um, if you open the notes you will find some more details and then understand the whole thing a little bit more in detail yeah that should be it for this video <clears throat> i hope again that uh, on the one hand the beginners and newbies could learn something um, i would really appreciate if you drop a, a comment if you have something that you think i could improve yeah? or if you just uh, tell me that it was helpful for you that's also um, feedback that i would really appreciate in this context of course also if you uh, give me a like for this video uh, that motivates me to proceed to create more videos and for the more advanced um, uh, users consultants developers i uh, can also tell you that i'm working on a video where i'm uh, explaining the options to enhance the warehouse order creation rules so that would be a little bit more interesting for you and uh, this video will probably be published during the next months so you can look forward to this and um, up till then i wish you happy coding happy consulting and see you next time bye